Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to test the accuracy out on this Palmetto PX9. Uh, this is a, a, uh, a 10 and a half inch uh, 9 millimeter AR pistol, okay? So 10 and a half inch. I've tested out the 16 inch barrels. Uh, usually they come in somewhere between three and four inches. Uh, usually closer to four inches. You know, I have to be having a really good day to consistently hit those three inches with the 16 inch barrel. Uh, so I said, hey, let's let's try it the 10 and a half inch. Let's see what type of accuracy we can get. Now I am working with target ammo, okay? So I'm using blazer and uh and tula, okay? So the best grouping that I got, uh the very last one I shot. Um basically it's a six shot group, okay? So uh if you look here, you got one, two, three, four, five shots that are within three inches, in, inside of three inches, like two and three quarters, okay? But then there's one flyer way out over here that opens up the total group to seven inches. I'm going to say that that's the ammunition, okay? Because I know that when I was shooting, I was watching my follow through. When I had my dot over here on the on the bullseye, you know, uh, basically when I'm holding, because I had the gun rusted, the, the dot looks like like that if it moves, okay? It goes bang, you know, it'll go bang like that. That's as much as it, it never went boom, boom, okay? Uh, so it never moved that much. To make it go that far off so I'm gonna just call that inconsistent inconsistency in the ammunition uh, and I've got five shots here that gives me confidence in saying I'm not even gonna say it's two and three quarters I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna say it's three three inches right I'm gonna say it's a three MOA um, so I shot it again uh, here uh, same deal I've got one two three four five shots that are inside of three inches right again same thing two and three quarters and one shot way off over here i did uh actually shot this one before the other one and i adjusted my uh uh my 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 zero over to the right a little bit looks like i gotta adjust it a, a little bit more because it didn't exactly it didn't quite come over center um so that but this that's why this one is further off to the left same deal here i'm gonna discount that one and just say that that is just bad ammunition because I got five shots here that are uh, inside of three inches. I feel, you know, uh, really, you know, really confident that that's what this rifle can do. Uh, now, yeah, granted, if you use match grade ammo, you're going to do a lot better. Um, I generally don't buy match grade nine millimeter because normally with nine millimeter, we're shooting pretty close. Okay, um, so I was shooting that with this Blazer ammo. You know, basically cheap ammo. I buy, I buy a thousand rounds at a time of this. I also tried it with Tula. Uh, right, these are all 115 grains, you know, for both of these ammos. So when I shot it with Tula, same deal. Again, same thing I usually see. I got a five shot group that's uh, four inches, right? So this one opened up a little bit more. That might have been me, right? Uh, usually Tula shoots a little bit more accurate for me than other uh, nine millimeter, than other uh, target nine millimeter ammo. And then there's one that was way out over there, which opened it up to about total group up to nine inches. But that one, again, I'm going to discount it. This is something I've seen so many times with 9mm that I, I just come to expect. And again, when I'm shooting this, my dot looks like this. Boom, boom, boom. It, you know, it doesn't. It never looks boom, boom, because that's what it would have to do to, for me to put the shot over there. So, uh, four inches over here. Uh, this was, I think, probably like one of the earlier groups that I shot. Uh, so, I'm, I'm going to go with this one over here and, and that one. Uh, I'm just going to say that the Palmetto PX9 in the... 10 and a half inch barrel uh i'm gonna call that a three moa uh a three moa gun right or ar pistol uh three inches at at 100 yards now uh another interesting uh side note okay uh one of the things i've noticed because i've got a lot of these uh uh you know a lot of these nine millimeter ars and on this one here in particular i had noticed that when i was at different gun ranges training people uh sometimes Either sometimes they would, uh, they would, you know, I would get like a two shot, like a, like a two shot string, okay. Uh, and I didn't know if they were bump firing the gun, but I hope because remember I'm training beginners. Uh, now some guns tend to bump fire easier than others. Some guns, if you feather it, you know, it tend if you if you, if you lightly press the trigger, it'll bump fire. Uh, also with some uh, some of these guns, if you uh, you know if you do the same thing, if you don't squeeze the trigger all the way to the back. Or if you don't hold it 
firmly into your chest sometimes the uh the, the hammer doesn't uh doesn't reset right that's another thing that i i sometimes have noticed with these nine millimeter ars and i do have an eight ounce buffer weight in here right which kind of slows down the action it, it generally makes the gun more reliable so uh, interesting point here that i'm trying to bring out is that while i was shooting this today testing it out i never once had a problem with like with with burst rounds or with the hammer not resetting okay um which leads me to believe that all the times i have seen people do like burst rounds with this or the hammer not resetting uh, it's because they didn't have the gun pulled all the way into their chest and they weren't pulling the trigger all the way to the back so uh so basically a user error now same people shooting a different uh px9 same company right uh you know they don't do it on the other gun so it's like it's a weird thing sometimes like some of these px9s tend to be problematic if you don't have a firm if you don't you know if you don't use really good form right uh I'm so, I'm so, some of them tend to be problematic Others are a lot more forgiving. It's just kind of the luck of the draw. I, I put eight ounce buffer weights in everything. They all pretty much have um, the palmetto uh, because you can't put a regular, uh, well, these these are designed to take mil spec AR triggers, but but you can't put like an AGL one, uh, an AG, uh, a, a ALG, I forget. The, ALG tells you that you can't use their triggers with the PX9s. Um, in fact, it's cheaper to just get the replacement triggers from Palmetto. I mean, it's like $30. If you get the ALG ones, uh, it's still like $60 or $75. The, the triggers for these, uh, when you run out the triggers, and if you shoot, as you start to approach 10,000 rounds, the, the trigger will start wearing out. You'll start seeing burst rounds, or you'll start seeing the trigger lock up. It's time to, if you start seeing it regularly, it's time to replace the trigger, right? These parts have pretty limited lifetimes. Uh, ARs in general are not designed, uh, they're designed uh, to be lightweight, you know, lightweight, cheap guns. They're not designed to be like guns that don't ever break, okay? So with the high round counts, things start wearing out on these guns. On the, ni the nine millimeter blowbacks, right? Because there's a blowback system. Uh, it doesn't have the rotating bolt to, so to, to basically pick up more of the uh, of, of the recoil, right? So uh, nine millimeter bolts tend to be very abusive. They're, they're very hard on the gun. Um, before I upgraded these to eight ounce buffer weights, I used to break the hammer pins on these. Uh, ever since I moved up to the eight ounce buffer, eight ounce buffer weights, I stopped breaking the, the hammer pins on this, okay? So uh, direct blowback uh, AR9s, very hard on the gun, okay? So you can expect that you're gonna, you know, as you start to approach 10,000 rounds, you're going to break stuff. Uh, extractors are going to break. Firing pins are going to break. Uh, trigger groups are going to wear out. Just have backup parts ready, okay? Uh, so just wanted to share that with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you all soon. Uh, hey, real quick, I want to show you guys what triggers I was talking about. Uh, I kind of sounded like Joe Biden talking about the... Uh, AFT, okay, um, but yeah, ALG, right? Uh, these are these are really good triggers for regular AR-15. Um, back in 2020, when I was like, my, it was like my busiest year. You know, I was going through this pretty quickly, right? Uh, I mean, these things have limited lives, okay? Uh, they're they're good. They're probably good for eight for five thousand rounds. I would probably run them up to about eight to ten thousand rounds before they went bad. Uh, but they have limited lives, but you cannot, you cannot put these in your nine millimeter ARs, uh, somewhere in the instructions, it, they, it, this company tells you you're not supposed to do it. Uh, so the best thing to do and the cheapest thing to do is get, go to Palmetto's website and order replacement triggers for the nine millimeter for their PX9. Uh, and they're cheaper. They're like $30 as opposed to like the 60 to $75 uh, that these are okay so these are good for your standard ar-15s 556 um but not for your nine millimeter ars talk to you all soon